Right, let's get on to mining news now. The world's third largest producer of gold, Anglo Gold Ashanti, has posted a second quarter loss and suspended dividend payouts after the precious metal suffered a record three month decline in prices. Now, the adjusted headline loss, excluding some one time items, was $135 million in the quarter, compared to a profit of $113 million in the first quarter. Shares in the firm consequently slid to a 12 year low, dropping by as much as 6.5%. Changing hands 5% lower at 115 rands and 89 cents by 2.43 p.m. in Johannesburg. That's the lowest intraday level since April 2001. Angler Gold has 21 operations across 10 countries. It plans now to cut jobs, capital expenditure, exploration, to slow down production at some of its higher cost mines as it adjusts to a gold price that so far is 24% lower in 2013. The company also plans to start mining gold at two relatively low cost mines in the Democratic Republic of Congo and Australia this year, and it has suspended its dividend in order to conserve cash. Now, one of the countries in which Anglo Gold Ashanti has operations in is South Africa, where the country's largest gold mine companies started mediation with unions today. This, of course, comes after mining company bosses declared an official dispute at the end of last month, citing an enormous gap between the wage demands offered by employers and what's being demanded by employees. Now, the Association of Metal and Construction Workers has agreed to take part in the talks. Here's CCTV's Guy Henderson with this update from Johannesburg. Chamber of Mines has been attempting for uh, quite a few months now to try and get AMCU to the table. So this is being seen to some extent uh, as a bit of a breakthrough. But on the other hand, it is a double-edged sword because AMCU are demanding a 150% pay rise for entry-level underground workers. Uh, the NUM itself, the Kasatu affili affiliated union, uh, is demanding a 60% rise for those same workers. Uh, that's led the union to um, lead a dispute declaration against the chamber, and that mediation process begins on Thursday. Uh, the chamber itself has now taken the unusual step as well at the end of last month of declaring a dispute of its own against AMCU. So talks are at least underway. The two sides are talking, um, but with mining bosses being increasingly squeezed by the continuing fall of the price of gold, the next few months are likely to be extremely grueling. Guy Henderson, CCTV, Johannesburg. Right, on to infrastructure now. If all goes according to plan, construction work on the Maputo Katemba Bridge in Mozambique will be wrapped up in the next three years. Once complete, that three kilometer bridge should ease the movement of people and goods in a region which so far has been served by some pretty dilapidated ferries. Here's CCTV's Julie Shire with the details. Chinese investment in infrastructure is helping Mozambique grow economically at more than 7% a year, making it one of the fastest growing countries in Africa. But there are poor infrastructure limitations that are hampering this country's progress. To change the situation, China is assisting with a major project, the Maputo Katembe Bridge and Ring Road. The project, costing $725 million, was awarded to Chinese state company China Roads and Bridge Corporation and includes the construction of a three kilometer bridge as well as the road between Maputo and Ponta do Ouro on the border with South Africa, an ambitious project which will bring a much needed boost to the economy and generate many jobs. We will provide in the three uh, years one, we're working with the bypass and the bridge. We will give uh, provide more than 1,000 posts for the local people. And I think the Chinese technician will working together with the local people and uh, try to uh, learn and give them the skill of the work in the infrastructure like the road and the bridge. The two sides of Maputo Bay are currently linked by an aging fleet of ferries which are mostly overloaded with no safety features such as rafts and life jackets. A trip by ferry can take anything from 30 minutes to an hour depending on the number of passengers. A harsh reality that is far too familiar with commuters. It will be very good if we, if we have a, a, a concretization of the, 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 the construction of the, the bridge. We, we as a people of uh, uh, Katembe, uh, we are waiting for this a long time, we, we are waiting. The wait is expected to last another three years, 
But once the bridge is built, the trip will be uninterrupted and the population of Katembe is expected to increase from its current 20,000 to over 400,000 people. This ferry service is not sustainable and its marine infrastructure has not been maintained for many years, making this crossing not only dangerous but extremely time-consuming for everyday commuters. The Maputo Katembe Bridge, once finished, will be like a dream come true for many Mozambicans. Julie Shire, CCTV News, in Maputo, Mozambique. Now, just before Penina Kiribe brings you your speed fix as far as the World Athletic Championships are concerned, quick run through the markets across Africa for the time being. The All Share Index in Nigeria is in the red, down by just about half a percentage point. The All Share Index in South Africa in the green, however, up by just under two tenths. The 20 Share Index in the Kenyan capital, Nairobi, uh, end of the day higher by about over a third. And of course, today being Eid, the uh, Egyptian market is closed down. We'll have a more comprehensive look at those numbers at 1700 GMT. See you then.